at ISS, we take great pride in empowering our staff to make both operational and strategic decisions using their initiative and judgment to successfully deliver the business critical services our clients expect of them every single day. Now what is obvious to me is that these are the very same skills that our armed forces train into their staff from day one and then put to the test in often challenging high pressure environments. To be the world's greatest service organisation we need to have the world's greatest staff and that is why we encourage the recruitment of armed forces veterans. The thing I enjoyed most about military life, I would say, was the people. You meet some fantastic individuals, the camaraderie, uh, there's a real strong culture of banter. So it just takes away sometimes a lot of the difficult times that you do face in the military. I decided to leave the British Army uh, because I had a personal injury which prevented me from going any further in my career. And also I wanted to challenge myself in a new environment. I think people's greatest concerns when they first leave the armed forces is uh, the standard fear of the unknown as such. So whilst they know they've got a certain amount of skills that are transferable, they're informed of this uh, during the transition process, what they're perhaps less sure of, what are the social norms in the corporate workplace, what, what they can and can't do, I think there's a propensity to lean towards being overly careful, and I certainly was, where you're overly cautious. Uh, but that will come down with time and they'll start to relax into being a civilian. What we're looking for in when we're recruiting service personnel are their transferable skills, what they can bring to our business. There are things which they have in their everyday life which they might not think is important, but it is to us because we're a people company and we want people to be happy in their work because that reflects in giving good customer service. I would say the key skills that I achieved while I was in the Royal Navy would be uh, leadership. Um, you get an awful lot of leadership training, but it's also given the opportunity to, to develop those leadership skills. The ability to work as an individual and as a, t as a team player, you get an awful lot of responsibility, and at times that responsibility is played out in pressure environments. So it really gives you an insight into working under pressure. Ex-service personnel can bring a number of things to uh, a role within the business. First of all, because they're transferring from a previous career, they'll be mature individuals anyway. Most of them will have been working in teams and working in a team environment. It's really important to us. Other things, though, when we start to think about it, are things like that they have an ability to understand complex arrangements, carrying out instructions, what strikes me about the people that I've come across working from the military is that they're pretty much all finishers. They want to see a job through, get it done and get it done well. So initially upon my employment with ISS I was offered to be part of a mentoring scheme. Um, also I was offered one-on-one -on -one meetings with my line manager to see if I needed any development business-wise and to progress my career. So with the structure that's been offered to me within ISS, uh, with the different career paths, one being strategic and the other one being operations, uh, you have a clear choice of how you want to progress in your career. There's a lot of help out there for armed forces service leavers. ISS in particular are part of a multi-corporate led mentoring programme. This is where somebody leaving the armed forces is assigned a mentor, not any mentor, a mentor in their industry and their peer group who can really help them successfully transition into civilian employment. This mentor is able to help translate job descriptions, help them tailor CVs, load them onto training courses, and give them feedback should they be unsuccessful in job applications. My career is definitely within my own hands. There's no one that's going to manage it for me. And with the skills and, and attributes that I've acquired, it, they do directly translate and you have a great opportunity.